Hey guys, it's Adrian from Crafty Little Gnome and today we are talking about crafts and copywriting. So what does that mean? That means any kind of image that could have a copyright on it. It could be a cartoon character like Mickey the Mouse or it could be a sports logo like Seahawks. Uh, so when we're talking about copyrighted images and what are you allowed to use and what you're not allowed to use, the short answer is nothing. <laughs> you really should not be using any kind of copyrighted material, image, logo, or anything like that in your craft items. Um, you can use them for personal items. So what I mean by that is when you go to the fabric store like Joanne and you go and there's like bolts and bolts and bolts of all different kinds of fabrics that have Mickey the Mouse or um, the princesses from Frozen or sports teams on it. You can take those, you buy those and you can make all sorts of things. Um, my mom actually made my daughter these pajama pants. They have Wonder Woman all over them. So it's totally fine to, you know, go to Joanne and buy the fabric and make yourself and your family a whole bunch of cool clothes and go around town and wearing them. The trouble that you get into is if you try to sell them. So these companies um, like Disney or Universal Studios, whatever, they don't want you to be making money off of their product. Because if you're buying it from your neighbor next door, it means you're not buying their product and they own the copyright on that and you're not allowed to use it. Um, in order to sell. So again, it's okay for personal use only, but it's when you try to sell it that's when you're gonna get into trouble. And if you do try to sell it online, um, what can happen is the company that owns the copyright on it can send a message to Etsy or whatever platform you're on and say, hey, this person is uh, infringing on our copyright. Um, if you don't take it down, we're gonna sue you. So what would happen is Etsy will deactivate your item and send you a message saying you can't use this, please take it down, otherwise we're going to kick you off our site. So this happened to me a couple times. Um, actually, I'll tell you about the first one. This necklace I'm wearing, this is my vampire um, bite choker necklace and it's got two little Swarovski crystals on a silver chain. It kind of looks like vampire fang marks. Um, so I sold a ton of these when the vampire craze was going on when the Twilight movies first came out. So maybe back in like 2012 I started selling them and I had in my listing I had um, you know Twilight vampire bite necklace and then in the hashtags I had um, Twilight and some of the Twilight movie names. Uh, what happened with me was I got a message from Etsy saying hey this product is in a copyright violation, we're deactivating it. Um, if you reactivate it, we're gonna kick you off our site. I was super confused at first because I was like, okay, I had no idea, like, what is the copyright infringement? And then I finally figured it out that the company that made the Twilight movies owns the um, trademark or the copyright of the word twilight in regards to like vampire stuff which seemed totally ridiculous because twilight it's just a word it's like a time of the day twilight is the morning <laughs> so i um what i ended up doing was i removed the word twilight i just called it vampire bite necklace or vampire necklace and I removed anything to do with Twilight in the tags completely off of it and then I redid my listing and then it's been fine ever since then for like the past five or six years and I still sell a good amount of them usually around Halloween but I haven't had any issues. The other time that I had a problem was I was selling these earrings that were um, they were really small they looked like little gummy bears and they were made out of plastic and I used to sell on Artfire as well as Etsy and I got a message on both platforms saying that there was a complaint against me because I guess the little gummy bear is a copyrighted image. It's from Hasbro and the candy company owns the copyright on it and they did not want me to be making any kind of money off of their little gummy bear guy. So I had to remove that. I didn't go ahead and try to relist it in any way. Um, I didn't really think there's a way that I could rework that without it, um, I guess, violating their copyright. Uh, it's just a little gummy bear there's nothing really I could do to it it wasn't like the title like with the Twilight thing it was the actual product that looked like a little gummy bear so I haven't listed that one again and 
that's fine. Uh, so you may be thinking, well, there are a ton of sellers online right now who are violating copyrights and how come they don't get into trouble? You could do an Etsy search right now for any sports team and you'll see illegal use of their logos. You can find a whole bunch of Disney stuff, a whole bunch of Mickey Mouse stuff, superheroes. It's all on there and you're thinking, why is it allowed? And the issue really with that is, is that they just haven't been busted yet. Um, they might be in the future, maybe not. The first thing that has to happen is the company that owns the logo or owns the image, the cartoon, has to file a complaint and they have to let Etsy know, hey, this is on there, we don't like it, it's a violation, you need to remove it. And if they don't remove it, they can sue Etsy and find them liable. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was, um, this was quite a few years ago, but if you went onto the uh, website eBay, you could go on there and get counterfeit products of basically any kind of like luxury um, brand purse, like Louis Vuitton, Chanel, they had so many fakes. You can probably still go on there and find them now, but back in the day when I was in high school, this was like, I don't know, 15 years ago, they had the, like a ton of them. And they actually, a lot of them looked pretty real. Um, so what happened was the company that owns all of those luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, they sued eBay and eBay had to pay a lot of money. I'm talking like millions and millions of dollars to these companies because they knew that this counterfeit product was being sold on their site and they let it happen. And they were also essentially earning money from it because of the seller fees that the sellers had to pay eBay. And the same thing can happen with Etsy, the same thing can happen with Amazon.com. Um, they could be found liable uh, in court uh, for allowing their sellers to um, sell copyrighted materials through their site. So they're going to want to be on top of it if somebody does file a complaint. So if you have some stuff in your store right now that could be considered copyrighted, you might want to think about removing it. You could wait till someone files a complaint. Um, the only thing that I would be wary of is that you could be held personally liable as well or your business can be. So technically, I mean, if you're selling Mickey Mouse t-shirts, uh, Disney could sue you and uh, take you to court over it and want you to pay um, licensing fees for it. So you may be wondering what about all of those other things you see in the store that have sports teams logos on it or that have cartoon character logos or images on it that aren't from Disney or aren't from the sports team. Um, I found this example in my pantry. This is Cocoa Pebbles and it's got Flintstones on it. So you can see like obviously Flintstones isn't a serial, it's a cartoon from way back in the day. So what would happen basically with that is that Post Serial has bought the um, licensing for the cartoon. So they bought the Fred Flintstone and the Barney Rubble and then allow, that allowed them to put it on the front of their cereal box. So they can go ahead and sell the cereal now with those images on it and not get in trouble because Hannah Barbara or whoever owns Flintstones, they're going to get a cut of that money or they have gotten paid in order to be used that imaging. So what does this mean for regular crafters like you and me? Well, if you're selling in person like at a craft fair, the risk of getting in trouble this is really, really small. Um, you're probably not going to get caught. I'm not saying that you should do it. Uh, it would be pretty irresponsible for me to say that you can go ahead and sell in person and get away with it. That's not really fair. Um, I mean, technically you shouldn't be doing it, but if you're super worried about getting caught selling at a craft fair or something like that, I mean, that's not really going to be what you're going to have trouble with. It's just going to be online sales. And um, so I would really try to stay away from using any kind of image that could have a copyright on it. If you're not sure if it does, then you want to just Google it quickly and find out. You can find that out pretty fast with Google. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is recycled items. The sun seems to be a bit confusing for people. Like if you're wondering, can I use like an old Coke can or beer can or wine bottle and uh, upcycle it into something else? Um, like a bird feeder or a hanging mobile where you can see the, um, the logo on it. 
one group that I'm on online, there was a woman and she makes purses and handbags out of old Capri Sun, you know, juice boxes. So she, she takes them, um, she cuts them and she sews them together and makes a purse out of it. And she was upset because she got in trouble for it. And she was like, Hey, doesn't the company care about recycling? Wouldn't they rather me, uh, make this into a new item than just throw it in the trash or the recycle bin? And the answer is no, <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> they would rather you recycle it or throw it in a dumpster than you make money off of their copyrighted image. So when it comes to feeling like, okay, well, justifying it by an environmental reason or, you know, I'm recycling this. Again, if it's for personal use only, if it's your own purse that you're just going to wear and take to the grocery store, you're totally fine. If you're going to try to sell it on a website like Etsy uh, or eBay or Amazon, just don't do it. You're going to get in trouble and it's not worth it. So another issue to bring up is what about other people's crochet and sewing patterns. We're talking like crochet hats, knit stockings, um, sewing patterns for like stuffed animals. And so the issue with that is number one, um, there might not actually be a copyright on it. The artist or creator may have not actually taken the time to file the paperwork and pay to have the copyright license for it. Does that mean that you can use it? No. Um, if somebody has taken the time and sold their pattern online and you go ahead and buy it, you cannot resell that pattern and you cannot make something with that pattern and then resell it, not with a paid pattern, unless it explicitly says somewhere in the instructions, you talk to the seller and they tell you that it's okay. Uh, just because somebody hasn't actually filed the paperwork for it doesn't make it okay. It's bad manners. Um, it's still technically illegal because it's their um, intellectual copyright, it's their creative copyright. So you can't just take somebody else's work like that and then pawn it off as your own. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a kind of a scandal a few years ago with the um, clothing store Urban Outfitters. They were accused of taking um, art and uh, designs from Etsy sellers from independent artists and having their own artists go ahead and make their version of it for much cheaper or much cheaper than it would have cost Urban Outfitters. So rather than contact the Etsy seller and pay them for the licensing for that image or that design, that jewelry design, whatever it was, they just essentially stole it, had their artists go make their version and then they sold it on their website. And that was like a huge scandal um, just because, I mean, it's just, you're hurting independent artists. You're hurting um, small businesses. It's not cool. So you can't do that either. You can't do that with sewing patterns. You can't do that with knit patterns or crochet patterns. So there is a website called craftsandcopyrights.com. It's got a lot of information on there if you're not sure. Google it, check it, leave a comment on this post. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer it. Remember to subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time guys. Bye.